Hi and welcome to Longevity's Learning Lab. I'm going to talk about reactive and inert gases, what the differences are, what uh, some of the gases are that are inert gases, uh, noble gases, uh, what they do when you're welding. The inert gases, the noble gases, argon, helium, uh, xenon, neon, radon, th these gases have uh, an arrangement, an atomic arrangement, with a, a shell of, of eight electrons. Electrons moving around the outside of the neutrons and protons. So this, this eight electron configuration is the most stable arrangement of any atom. So when they come up against other atoms, they don't give up and they don't receive any additional electrons from the other act atoms. So that makes them uh, inert or non-reactive to other elements. And that's what makes them very stable when you're welding because they, they push every other, uh, every other uh, atomic structure out of the way as the welding puddle cools. So that's what the benefit of inert or non-reactive gases is. Helium does not have the eight electron shell, but it does work as an inert gas, just as the other gases work. So in, our, in the air are, are uh, nitrogen, oxygen, hydrogen, and they're, they're just here, they're in the air. So when you're welding, when you form steel in the form of a weld puddle in a molten state, it will, it will trap those elements, the hydrogen, the nitrogen, and those elements want to move up so they will create holes in the molten steel as they escape from the weld. So what we're doing with uh, the argon, 75, 25, 100% uh, argon, we're, we're blowing those elements off of the weld puddle and shielding it with the uh, inert gas which does not react in the same way that these other elements do. Argon does not uh, combine and get trapped in the weld. Uh, so you have only the molten steel with no other elements trapped inside of it. And that's what those holes are. You can trap hydrogen, you can trap oxygen and nitrogen, and they'll also uh, fight their way up through the molten steel and create these wormholes and pinholes in the weld. I'm talking about shielding gases, but uh, uh, electrode flux, the, the flux outside of the, uh, the stick welding electrode is doing the same thing. It's a different form of it. Here you have a, have a hard shell covering, but it's emitting gases as it burns that are uh, again protecting the molten steel from the atmosphere, which is the main component that is going to contaminate the weld. There's also a contamination of the slag itself getting trapped in the molten metal, and that uh, is oftentimes operator technique. Shielding gas and cellulose powder or iron powder that is coating this uh, stick welding electrode is there to protect the molten steel as you're welding, but it can also get trapped. And if you trap hydrogen, if you trap oxygen, if you trap a bit of the cellulose or the iron powder in the weld, then that little spot is either a void of hydrogen and oxygen, something, or it's a little piece of slag that got trapped in there. And you look at it on an x-ray and it's a little black spot, it's a defect. So that means that the weld fails because that defect is not steel, it's not a, a part of the strength of the weld, it's a part of nothing. It's either a void of, of oxygen or it's a little trapped piece of slag, so there's no strength in that little spot. The weld is rejected and you do it over again. When you produce defects, then it becomes an expense for either you, uh, manufacturing parts, welding things together, or your employer, and you may not be able to just grind the weld out and put uh, the pieces back together and re-weld them. Those might just go to the scrap pile, and now two new additional parts need to be machined, need to be fitted together, need to be weld, and they need to pass without any defect so that uh, the strength requirements are met for whoever is, is putting this 
part in the service. So defects become a huge, huge component in welding. And so uh, there's a bunch of factors involved here. Uh, process and weld technique and uh, correct settings and shielding gas and correct flux, uh, similar materials g going in into the weld. So there's a bunch of factors that get incorporated into the welding process to re reduce your defect rate to zero. Factors that contribute to poor welding or defects that uh, appear in the welds are, are 42% per, um, poor process conditions. That means the, your robot is welding too fast. The, it's not set up correctly and the penetration is not correct. Uh, process conditions, con that's 42%. Uh, 32% is um, operator error that the, the whoever is well if it's a robot then the robot's set up badly but if it's you that's welding then your uh uh, you're setting up the machine wrong. You're not using the uh, correct materials. Your technique is wrong. Uh, uh, that 12% is actual technique. You're welding horizontally and, and your uh, electrode is down and the, the puddle's sagging down out of the puddle. Yeah, technique. 10% uh, is wrong consumables. You're putting the wrong wire into the weld. You're putting the wrong electrode material into uh, the metal that you're welding and the chemical composition is low different. So these are the factors, these are the percentages of the factors that are occurring that create bad welds. There's factors that you control, such as gas flow. Uh, there's a story of a guy who, who you could pull the trigger and you could feel the gas out here. Uh, he was using a PSI regulator rather than a flow meter. So you ought to be able to feel a gentle flow. With the wire speed turned down to zero, you ought to be able to feel a gentle flow of gas against the back of your hand. Um, your, pressure, your gas is too low. You're not putting, supplying enough gas to the puddle. Your, uh, the, the nozzle is totally filled with slag and, and spatter, and the gas is not even coming out of the nozzle. Your hose is corrupted somewhere. It's got a hole, or somebody's got a, a wheel parked on the thing, and the gas is not flowing out of the nozzle. The, uh, uh, wires, you're too far away from the plate because the wires stick out. It's so long that your shielding gas is not protecting the weld. Your angle is funky and your, gas, your shielding gas is just moving off the weld. There's uh, rust and scale on the plate. Uh, there might be water uh, uh, present and you're welding through and you think that it's evaporating out but some of it's getting contaminated into the weld. So lots and lots of factors that you have to see and experience and learn about and then overcome them and you learn these problems and you avoid them in the future. I hope you understand something about inert gases versus reactive gases. Uh, inert gases don't react with other particles on an atomic level and so that's what we're doing. We're just protecting this molten steel as it cools. Um, thanks for joining us on Longevity's Learning Lab. I hope you learned something today.